Hey sports fans, it's Neil with the Fix Yourself channel here and uh, I got two mowers on a table. Maybe it's about time I do something with them to get them out of the way. Um, this one here has got a leaky oil seal on the bottom of the engine. That's what's the problem with that one. And this one here um, has got a bad oil drain plug. I wonder if we can even see that. I'm shining a light in here. Oh yeah, okay, I'm trying to light right on that. And that's a steel pipe plug going into a cast aluminum pan. And I know what happened. Um, here is an oil pan for one of these engines. Right here is an oil pan for one of these engines. And here's the oil drain plug. This has got an elbow on it for whatever reason. But uh, then that pipe thread gets turned in too tight. Just put, put a hairline crack right there. So it would drip oil, drip, 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 drip. Now, I don't know how much it cost to have it welded. I had it done years and years ago and it failed again. But I found this one on eBay for 12 bucks. Now the shipping was 30 bucks on that sucker. So there's $42 for that oil pan, engine bottom cover, whatever you want to call it. And uh, let's find out if that's going to work. Um, I wasn't particularly careful. I just uh, looked up on eBay oil pan for Kohler CV14 engine. I know I'm assuming they're all the same. I didn't do much checking. I never pulled this engine off. So we'll find out if I got burned or not. You know, I just winged it and ordered it. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. When I saw 12 bucks, I was all over it. And then uh, when I hit place order and it said uh, $42, you know, I saw $30 shipping. It's like, holy cow. But, oh God, I felt like I hit the point of no return then. There is a part number on here. We will see once we pull that other engine cover off if that's the same part number. The other thing too is before I put this on, I'm probably going to have to order a new oil seal. That would be pretty stupid to put that back together and find out it's a leaky oil seal. So I'll order a new seal for that, which is also, that's the problem with this on this rider here too, is the oil seal is uh, bad and it's leaking. Oh, well, you probably can't see it, but that's, it's leaking off that bottom shaft. Probably can't see it. Take a couple picture views of it. I bet you can't see anything. I can't even see it, let alone, let alone you folks. But uh, right up in that area, right there, there's there's leakage. So we'll try and take care of that later, uh, one thing at a time. So we'll start by uh, tearing apart this uh, mower here. It really isn't too big a deal. There's not a whole lot of, it's like four volts holding it on. Uh, Got to take off a couple of wires and uh, we'll have to take off the main pulley off the bottom of the engine. But shouldn't be too big a deal. Should be less work pulling this motor than just taking the peripherals off a car engine to remove that. So shouldn't be too bad a job. So let's have at it. All right. This machine's got four bolts holding on the engine. And uh, they come up through the bottom, there's tape, threads uh, tapped in the block. And uh, so there's one right in that area, that's where one bolt would come up. And then on the front corner, uh, there's another one right there. Um, don't know if you can see it, but uh, let's see if I can get this into, there we go. Now right where my flashlight is pointing, that's where the other one is. And the other side is very similar. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect any uh, wires on this and I'm just going to pull this whole solenoid off. That'll take care of all my primary wiring. And then there's just two wires over here on the other side that uh, go to the magneto and they're right here. Um, there's a charge wire and uh, and a kill switch wire. That, that's, that's all there is to it. So there isn't too much uh, as far as wiring is concerned on one of these machines for pulling the motor. So I'm going to take off that tapered hub that I explained about just recently and I'll take out the four bolts that uh, hold the engine on and let's see, remove our, our solenoid there so I can, and then unplug the wires for the uh, 
that go to the stator and uh, then we should be able to pull this engine off so let's check her out all right so a couple other things that I forgot to mention uh, I'm just connecting the battery the native battery wire just to prevent there from being any sparks um, I already got my uh, solenoid removed but I'm gonna have to drain the oil on this machine because I'm gonna tip the engine sideways and take off the engine cover so gotta get the oil out what's left of it in there out um, the other thing I got is I got to disconnect the throttle cable which is in this area right there um, and uh, I'll also have to uh, and I can do that right now I can unplug the wires that uh, this one here is the kill switch that goes to the uh, magneto if I unplug this wire right here and then this one here is the uh, 12 volt charging wire that uh, goes to the stator so now that's uh, most of my wiring taken care of right there so so the next thing I'll do is I'll drain my oil and probably disconnect my throttle cable all right I'm draining the oil here and uh, just a couple quick little tips here yeah, I've told you on earlier videos uh, the antifreeze jug with side cut off it sure makes a nice oil drain pan so I've drained, drained my oil into there and as long as I mentioned it I also mentioned this before um, these oil drain plugs almost always have a square uh, pipe plug in them square head pipe plug and yeah the regular wrench works good on it but a socket wrench isn't very good there isn't a whole lot of clearance on this mower to get a regular wrench on so I just pretty much limited to using a socket every time you can use a 12 point uh, socket and that'll grab a square drive uh, head but I just welded a nut on this uh, oil drain plug it just made it easier to uh, remove I the handy little thing only took me about a minute to do and sure made oil changes a hell of a lot easier so just two quick tips here that don't have a whole lot to do with uh, the project I'm at but uh, just thought I'd mention them so I'm gonna keep going on removing the mower or the motor from this uh, lawnmower and when I get to the next interesting part I'll stop and show you now the next thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to remove the fuel line and I'll probably just remove it right here at the fuel filter this uh, these commercial mowers have a sh shut off on the bottom of the gas tank that uh, you know keep the fuel from draining out once I disconnect that line and then I have to disconnect that uh, throttle cable there and uh, you can see it running along the side of the engine there and it goes between the battery box and uh, right underneath there is where it mounts so that's gonna be kind of tricky disconnecting that I'll probably have to uh, I'll probably have to end up taking off the battery box I hope not because that involves taking off this wheel and all that I don't want this to get more involved than I originally thought but isn't that the way things always go all right sports fans I'm just going to show you where I'm at um I wish I could show you each step of the way why I'm doing it but I don't have a separate cameraman here right now and even if I did this is pretty difficult for you to see so actually it's probably looking be working out better that I have the parts where I can just show you the parts off the machine but if you can get a view of it I don't know you got an oil filter in the way there um probably can't see too much see wherever I tried to focus you can barely see the bolts coming out out of that pulley right there you can't see much here so I'm just going to show you the parts off the machine um this is the way these tapered hubs work normally okay when it's when the machines put together this uh, hub fits inside this pulley like so okay and of course uh, they got to line up with the holes but normally okay you have two sets of holes on here they got larger holes with no threads and smaller holes with threads normally when the machines put together the bolts go through the larger holes with no threads when it comes time to take it off you remove the bolts you remove these bolts here and you put them in these threaded holes there which will line up with threaded holes uh, actually I take that back you put them in these smaller holes and this time there's threads in the hub and they'll go through uh, and you, you turn them down they will actually uh, push the hub right off the uh, right off the pulley and uh, actually I put it in the 
but that's that's what he, I'll put them in the other hole there you can kind of imagine but as you thread them in you know they're going to go down and that will push that hub right off the pulley and and one word of caution though when you do it you have to do one bolt and then the other just a little bit of time they have to stay even you, you're not going to be able to crank one way down like this one and have one still up there you got you got to do them both you can thread them all the way in until you feel them bottom out okay but after you feel them bottom out against the pulley probably do about half a turn on this one half a turn on that one half a turn on this one half a turn on that one and have them come out evenly um, otherwise you'll cock that pulley or that hub in the pulley and well you can end up breaking stuff is what will happen chances are the most likely thing you'll do is you'll break the bolt and uh, so you do that to buy a new hub which or else drill and tap out the bolt either way it's a bad deal but you can avoid it by evenly uh, screwing those bolts in which will force this hub out of the pulley it works pretty good so that's what I'm gonna do next here eventually when you turn those bolts in that's gonna separate this hub and pulley okay but it's still not gonna want to come off the shaft probably you know you'll notice the pulley will come loose from the hub but the hub is not loose from the shaft yet now in order to take care of that once you get the hub loose from the pulley and you'll know when it is it, it'll kind of pop the pulley will kind of pop off the shaft but uh but the hub won't the hub will remain tight on the shaft usually okay but the, the pulley will come loose from it once you get to that point you can take a screwdriver and stick it turn the shaft so the slot is facing you stick a screwdriver in there and just pound it in a little bit with a hammer that will spread this pulley apart and make it come loose off the shaft. I do have to warn you, however, when you do that, at the same time you do that, you're going to have to have that pulley is separated as far as you can from the uh, from the hub. And I know that sounds kind of difficult, but you can imagine if the if the if the hub was tight in the pulley, you're just going to be, you know, working against the tapered fit of that pulley against that tapered hub. So you have to kind of separate them, if you know what I mean. Slide them as far as you can apart on the shaft and uh, pound a screwdriver in there just a little way and that, that uh, pulley hub will, the hub will come right off. And like I say, I wish I could show you under the machine, but it's dark in there and there's all kinds of uh, things in the way like the oil filter and the other drive pulleys, the idle, idle pulleys. But uh, that's what's involved with that. So I'm gonna take that off and I'll show you what it's like when I get it off. It's probably gonna look a lot like this. All right, sports fans, I think this is all I'm gonna do on this one today. I got the engine pulled, I got her setting on upside down. Um, I wish I could have shown you more of the actual steps involved in removing this motor, but uh, they're just, I think even with the camera, man, I just don't see how I could get a camera uh, getting a good view of it, me doing the uh, operations at the same time. But, you know, the main takeaway from this video I wanted to show you was how to uh, take care of one of these. Uh, tapered hub uh, type pulleys. Uh, well, that one there is a traditional set screw one. This had two pulleys. This is for the drive, the uh, transmission drive. But for the mower drive, uh, it's that tapered shaft deal. And I got her off. I might do a standalone video or make a separate video clip about exactly how to do that uh, off the machine. So you get the idea. Because that was the main thing I really wanted to show you. The rest of it was pretty much just removing nuts and bolts, uh, being as difficult as it was reaching underneath. But that being said, okay, now we get to find out if I was a winner or a loser on my parts gamble where I just ordered it to uh, eBay without really checking anything. I, oh, yeah, Kohler CV14, yeah, it ought to be the same, you know. I didn't really check anything else, okay. But I can tell you this much, when we look at it, all the, the shape of the pan seems to be the same. Where the oil drain plugs are, that appears to be the same right there. I got you know one pan stacked on the other. Every bolt hole, when I look straight down at them, appears to line up with the other bolt holes. Okay, so I'm good there. I took a measurement of this seal right here. I actually took a measurement of the of my engine crank right there. Okay, with my calipers. And that seems to be about the same as that seal, so I think the shaft size is okay. Found a part number. Um, 
it's easy to see on my new part or my used part that I bought when I bought it. Um, there's her part number 1247603. Well, cleaned up my the, my engine and the part number on my engines. Are we a winner? 12, 4, 7, 6, oh, 4. Okay, we're one digit off. Well, that won't make you a lottery winner, but a lot of times it's an insignificant difference on something like this. So I'm just going to have to tear it the rest of the way apart and see if these uh, oil pans or bottom covers, whatever you want to call them, interchange. All right, I got the engine pulled off this, and it does look like the vast majority of oil is right where that drain plug was. So that kind of confirms my suspicion that... Uh, that uh, bottom uh, engine cover was cracked. However, however, I took this engine out and I put some oil back in. I put the drain plug and put some oil back in it to see if it leaks on a static test. And right now I'm not seeing any leakage. So now I'm starting to wonder what the heck's going on. You know, memories get foggy. I had two of these mowers. I sold one. Was it the other one where it leaked from a cracked oil pan? Or does it possibly exist that I was afraid of cracking again and I never tightened up the drain plug tight enough? I don't think that's a possibility. I always wrapped it with plenty of Teflon tape and snugged it up pretty good. Um, is it a situation where it's not leaking from there? Is it leaking from the rear, the bottom seal on the crankshaft? Um, I'll have to get a new one of them regardless. Or is it something where it has to run in order to leak and get warm? I could fire up this engine right here on these blocks of wood and let it run at low RPM, and I might have to do that. The other thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to uh, flip this engine on its side here and see if I can see where the oil is leaking out. So I just added the oil to it. I had one quart last night thinking well I don't want to waste any more than I have to and I didn't see any dripping so I added another quart we'll let it sit all day and I'll check it tomorrow but uh, oh, this is turning into kind of a fiasco something I thought would be kind of easy um, and like I say I'm not even sure if my new bottom cover that I spent $42 on uh, eBay is is the right one it sure looks like it's the right one but we won't know until we're until we get it all torn apart, so we'll continue this later.